Welcome to Detailers Roadmap Cruise Control, helping you navigate the roadways of life, business, and everything in between. Hey guys, this is Kevin Davis from the Detailers Roadmap Cruise Control Podcast. This is episode number two, and today we're talking to a very good friend of mine, Barry Thiel. Barry is the co-founder and CEO of SB3 Coatings, among other things. And uh, I'm impressed with Barry because he has built some really cool stuff over the years. He's got a great career. We're going to talk more about it. I'll let him fill more of that in. But the other thing I like to show, uh, point out is that Barry actually, unlike some of us, myself included, he still details uh, on well occasion when he gets a great project. So I did, you know, the proof is in the pictures, unless he's posting pictures like from 10 years ago, I'm pretty sure it was actually him. So, uh, but no, welcome Barry, man. Thanks for coming. This is, uh, this is going to be fun. I'm interested to learn more about you and kind of inspire some of these business owners and detailers, um, you know, along the way. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. It's uh it's a blessing. It really is. It really is. And like you said, man, we've been friends for a while now. It's uh it's nice to do something with you for once. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah other than other than a passing conversation while you're working at SEMA and I'm working at SEMA and yeah, uh, doing that. So it's uh it's it's going to be awesome. Why don't you fill in kind of your if you can give us I don't think everybody knows, you know, some of these OG guys like yourself, I don't count myself in that group, but the OG guys of the detailing industry, I think people just see what, where you are now um, and kind of yeah. what you're doing now, but especially some of these younger guys, they have no idea kind of what your story is. So I'd love to get more about your story and, um, you know, kind of, yeah. kind of let Anytime, people know on that. I, for me, it's tough because like, I hate to use that word OG, Kevin, because you 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 make me sound old, and that's the last thing I want. Dude, I'm 50, so I let you know. I mean, we're yeah. you're younger than me, so like, I'm embracing the grays. Um, I'm okay with those. You know what I'm saying? But the age number thing that just scares me. But I don't feel 50. I don't feel 45. I'm 45, and I don't feel it. So that's a good thing. I think that's a blessing, right there. Yeah. Um, it really is. You know, I think. Uh, but. Yeah, it's tough. I struggle with this too, man. You brought up a good, good point. Um, the, the point being that people don't know me anymore as a detailer. Yeah. They know me as Barry Thiel, the guy that owns SB3 Coatings. And, you know, it, I struggle with this. Even just this past weekend, I, you know, I, I, I let my own self beat my own self up and I did something I didn't want to do. Um, you know, I hopped on the internet and I, I called a guy out because he sent me a Facebook message that said my photos were photoshopped and I'm like, no, <laughs> Oh man, I didn't even know that. that. Sorry. I didn't mean to open a wound there. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. So I actually, I didn't call the guy's name out never said who he was. I just hopped on, made a live video and said, here you go, man. This is what's in front of me, you know? Um, and it was, it was a dramatic change on an old Porsche that was in a barn. So I could see his point, but at the same time, I was like, no, man, I, I've been around a long time. I'm only 45, but I started detailing when I was 15 in high school as a part-time gig. And the only time I really walked away from it was when I was in the military for a brief mm. amount of time in my life. I came right back into the industry and got right at it, went strong. But people don't know that Barry Thiel can actually detail a car. Some of them don't. The younger generation, the older guys or the OGs, as you say, Kevin – which I think I'm working into that statue now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd like to think those OG guys are like Jason Rose, Rennie Doyle, you know, the guys in their 50s and up, not Barry yet. But I think Claude, getting... Claude Harris. I mean, OG is more of a original yeah. gangsta, right? That's the, it just means yeah. that you, you've uh, built your chops over the years. Yeah. Um, I did. I, I've been blessed like you, man. I've had a great career. I literally, I think I'm living my best life right now. If I, if I could say that. Obviously, we always have things we're working on, you know, and uh, I'm sure you, like you, you understand you're always working or building something. I'm actually pretty jealous. I need a husband like you myself. <laughs> you know? I, I'm, I, for hire, garage, I'm for hire, man. I'm for hire. Kevin. You know, <laughs> uh, you build a garage, call Kevin. You, you want to build a car? Call Kevin. You know, you're, you're a man of many trades, dude. I love it. Um, and I, I'm, I'm the same way, I think. I have that same passion. Like, I, like you, I like to be creative and I like to build. Mm -hmm. and enjoy that build but a part of me is i was sitting down and i read a book years ago, a couple years ago uh by rick warren 
Yep. Purpose driven life, you know? And I, I was trying to just read it. Somebody handed it to me and said, Barry, I don't think you found your purpose yet, which is crazy because if you know the book, you know, yeah. I'm a believer, but at the yeah. same time, it, it's not just about your religion. The book really expands into finding your purpose and running with it at the end right. of the day. And I never really thought, what is my purpose in life? What is it? You know, I think very few of us actually know that. And I think I'm one of the fortunate ones that kind of has been blessed to have opportunities throw at me. And I've created those purposes. And today, now, I, I, I do. I live a life of trying to give back. Yeah. That's that's my big thing now. You know, it's not about Barry Thiel no more. It, it, it's about what can I do for others? How can I help them succeed? Because I find that if I'm helping others succeed, I feel better about myself. Yeah. And to see 100%. other people grow – I grow with them, if that makes sense. And that's yep. that's what I'm all about today, man. I want to see people grow. I want to see people be successful. And when I say successful, I'm not talking money. I, I'm talking a successful life. I, I want them to be happy from the inside, to be positive with who they are, to be confident with who they are, and just live that life of just being a good person in general, yeah. you know, yeah. we're all different walks of life, different shades of color, whatever. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is just be a good person at the end of the yeah. day. That's what yeah, it I've means got. I've, I've got some, uh, you know, some of my other projects going on right now, we're talking a lot about redefining success and what that yes. looks like. And, yes. and I think you hit it on the head, right? Um, you know, if you're, I always say, if, if your main objective is to earn money in this life, no matter what you're doing, you're, you're never going to make enough. First yep. of all, it, com it comes and goes, but that's, if that's what you're striving for, you're screwed already. Cause you're literally never going to make enough. Um, yeah, correct. you know, whether you it's six figures, seven, right. I mean, you, you just spend it anyway, at least I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but what do you tell? So with, with that as kind of your life philosophy and what you're doing now, what do you tell these young guys, um, and gals, you know, let's say under 30, under 35 or, or new to the industry or just new in your life, whoever you have influence over, what are you telling them to kind of try to guide them to be where you feel like you are now? Uh, the biggest hurdle I, I think I'm approaching now with, I do a lot of mentoring with younger detailers. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them have become successful. And the biggest hurdle I think I have now are the, the people who preach this 10x lifestyle, this scaling lifestyle, you've got to make millions or you're not worthy of nothing. I hate every one of those people. Mm -hmm. that you're not you're not a grant do cardone fan um do you know I have, i'm a fan of grant but i'm not a fan of that lifestyle that right he yeah did. yeah um I, I think grant's got a lot of great valid points a lot of great valid opinions but to say you have to live a life where you have to 10x everything yeah i i think is wrong because i have a kid in our in, in the network that i'm working with now that i've been talking to he, he constantly is worried about scaling his company, scaling, scaling, scaling. And he wants to make two, three, four million dollars a year in his detailing business. And I tell him, you're just, you're not ready yet. You're, you're, yeah, does he really know what that looks like? <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, he's like, and I'm not going to say his name, but he's three years in business as a detail shop owner. He's under the age of 25. He has three employees. And he's doing $60,000 a month in his detail shop. And he's not happy. That's and, awesome. And it's yeah, sad, like, but it's sad, right? Yeah, like that's amazing money, you know, for a kid that age. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I got to scale, I got to scale, I got to scale. Meanwhile, he's asking me about questions like in his shop, things are like not going the way they should. Things are being rushed. Things are being pushed out the door. You know, he had his first bad day with a customer, finally. Customer said, hey, I should have went to your competitor. This was a bad job. Mm. And what, you know, and that hurt him. And I think that would hurt all of us as business owners. I mean, if he's doing thing. 60 grand a month and he doesn't have that very often, good on he's him. Doing good. Doing good. <laughs> good on him. And that's what I told him. I was like, look, dude, you're doing $700,000 a year in gross profit 
I know your numbers, your net profit is really good. Why not just put a halt to this scaling thing and go back into your shop, regroup it and say, hey, listen, for the next year, I'm not worried about money. What right. I'm focused is I want my employees to have a better quality of life. I want a better quality of life. And let's just get things dialed in. And I told him the moment you do that and you be patient with it, the rest will happen yeah. because now it's a train. It's working. It's bumping. Everything's moving the way it should be. Growth will happen. But the the issue that I have is now everybody wants that financial success. And I yeah. say financial success because success to me is not money anymore. Right. Financial, they, they want that financial success, but they want it now. They want that instant gratification. And I don't know about you, Kevin, in your 50 years, but my 45 <laughs> years, instant gratification never did anything positive for me. Nope. You, you, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. that, to me, I think we're in a world where everything is going so fast. I think we as human beings forget to slow our lives down. And I'm one Absolutely. of those guys. I need to focus on that. I think you're one of those guys, too. You know, I, I think you're you're constantly moving, constantly doing something. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's just judging a book by its cover from the outside in, from what I see. Uh, but you're always doing something, so I think mm -hmm. I'm right a little bit. You know, <laughs> um, but you, you understand, and yeah. it's one of those things now where I'm trying to teach people different versions of success. Mm -hmm. Success to me is accomplishments. What can you put in front of me? What can I do with it? I've been successful. Thank you. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's not about money, you know, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, for me, success is I've been married almost 28 years. I've got two adult kids that are gainfully employed and, and happy. Um, you yeah. know, I have a, I have some monetary success, financial freedom and security. I have a great home that I've built, you know, all of that stuff. So that you know, the, the money side of it, which is as an entrepreneur, it's always a stress, right? Like you're not, yeah. you, you know, it's, it's always something, whether you're making 60 grand a month or six, you're always going to have, or 6 million, whatever, you're always going to have that as a, as a tendency to be, you know, a challenge and, and something you think about, but yeah, definitely monetary success is not, is not it. So what's for this guy that's, that you've been mentoring, what, what is it that's driving him towards this, I have to scale, like what's his, where's that motivation coming from? Cause I think a lot of the influence. business owners and detailers are going to be the same. Yeah. I think it's influence. Mm. I, I think we live in a culture now where, and I'm starting to see it like in our generation, we grew up, I did anyway, where if you wanted money, you had to show up, work, put the overtime in and earn it and go from there and build. Now there's so many different ways to make money. It's almost too easy, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, I really do. Like once you figure out a, a, a way of doing it, you can just repeat that cycle multiple times. Yeah. Um, but what happens is now I think a lot of these younger generation, and by younger generation, I'm talking young entrepreneurs, yeah. not age, you know, it's, I'm talking more experience level. They, they come into a business and they want – right away they just want to grow they want they think that it's going to be easy you know you're going to put the work in the money is going to come and everybody's happy well what happens mm -hmm. when it doesn't come yeah. what happens you know in our industry in the northeast where it shuts down for five months four months because of snow <laughs> things slow down and all that money that you made in the previous months you forgot to put some back for the winter and now you're out of business yeah you know yeah I, my focus now is more of like a moderation style life, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I really, I, I stress two things in my life. One of them is servant based leadership and the other one's moderation. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, if you do everything in moderation, there shouldn't be any extremes, you know? Um, and if you learn to lead in a servant way to where you're, you're going in, you're, you're leading a group to help them genuinely help them versus leading them to collect from something you know i don't want to cash in no more i want to cash out and help people yeah. i don't want you know what i'm saying yeah. and for me that those are the two things in my life now that 
I really try to focus on. Sometimes it's hard for me because yeah. I, I have a very short tolerance level for certain things in life. I hate <laughs> to say that, but that's the truth. Yeah. Um, that's one of my downfalls is tolerance. Um, but I work on it daily. Mm-hmm. You know, even just this morning on my way into work, I was driving. Got the stuff, got behind a Prius, and I'm thinking, okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Then, yeah. then I see a handicap thing on the Prius, you know, mm. and I'm like, oh man, now I got an older person in a Prius that's going to drive 20 <laughs> miles an hour when I want to get there at 60. You know, mm-hmm. I'm mad about this, but yet I'm sitting there thinking, okay, relax, calm down, let's take it as a Sunday cruise, be peaceful. And yeah. I did. So I won That's, that battle against tolerance today. Yeah, it's always super outbacks. It, where we where I live, it's always super outbacks. They're super outbacks. Like, <laughs> yeah, literally. So the road at, from my house to town is a country road. It's 70 miles an hour. And <sighs> invariably like I don't I always tell Michelle, I'm like, what time do these people have to leave the house? Yeah. Because I leave <laughs> at a normal time and it still takes me a long time to get anywhere. If they're going 42 miles an hour, like, do they just leave the day before? Whenever they yeah. need to get anywhere, <laughs> like, like, there's nothing to do that day, you know. And I get it. Listen, I hope I hope one day I'm that guy slowing everybody down in life. To Dude, I hope I'm still story. driving the Cobra at a ridiculous. Yeah, at that yeah, point. that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's yeah. I mean, I think that the influence side of things, I think, drives. Um, first of all, to your point, I think when we were growing up, and even I don't know, a couple of decades ago, I think financial success was linear in other yeah. words there was definitely a cause and cause and effect you work hard um and you earn money like you make a living and you yep. know even even as we grow grew up i think there was more entrepreneurial spirit there's more small business than in previous generations but still you had to show up and do your job um, yeah and and i think that that's something that well i think the idea of of that not existing is what the problem is because it actually still does exist. You know, Um, my buddy posted yesterday, he was saying, he said something like, you know, passive income is great, but it doesn't come with a hell of a lot of active work prior to it being passive income. Correct. Correct. They they think I just, just start this thing, get the ball rolling. And then it just does its thing forever um, is not necessarily true. Right. Yeah, no, it doesn't roll forever. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> we we've both been been through ups and downs and, yes. and all that for sure. Well, I mean, and so like if you're talking about servant leadership, I think one of the things that's important. I mean, you obviously, you know, both of us are are kind of a little bit older than some of these younger guys. We we have a certain amount of influence, um, yes. not only in our personal lives, but in the industry and in you know, in our case, I'm in seven or eight different types of industries. Um, so that seems like, oh, great. We have this great, you know, sphere of influence. Well, what most, what, what I would say is most people have to realize is that your sphere of influence is much larger than you think, even if it's within your own family, your employees, your customers, it's, it's an attitude, I think, and you, you can kind of expound on this, but I think servant leadership goes just to try to do, try to serve other people in a way that enriches their lives as well as your own. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. For me. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like, and there's multiple ways of leadership. I just, um, being a Mason, you know, I'm a mm-hmm. Freemason, uh, very actively involved. I love the organization for what it does with charities, things like that. Um, that's where I learned my servant based leadership, mm-hmm. you know, because when, like what we do is like on a local level, we call it a blue lodge. Okay. That's, that's what you'll see in many of the small towns, cities, things like that, where the guys gather. Um, every year in the state of Pennsylvania, one person is elected to run that lodge and you kind of work your way up a chain of command. So, you know, you're there, you know, um, but you're not put there for nothing more than to serve the lodge and its people. That's it. Mm. The rest is just a title at the end of the day. Um, and for me, that's kind of where I really picked up on servant leadership, you know, because it was like, now the decisions I, I make could affect 700 people in my town, right? you know, plus the member, you know, the members wives, things like that. So you really begin to look at like, it's not what's best for me. It's what's best for everybody in the team. 
mm-hmm. you know, and there's a lot of leaders, I hate to say it, that are out there for what's in it for me, you know. Um, I've been very fortunate, like many, that I've had my positives come back to me in this industry. Like, I, I, I feel that, like, for me, if I walked away from the industry today, I left a positive note on my mm-hmm. footstep. Yeah. You know? Um, I left a big positive footstep. Do I want to make that footstep bigger? Yeah, absolutely. Do I want to expand? Absolutely. Um, But right now, I am having just so much fun working with others, mentoring them, help them build their businesses. Uh, Just just this past couple weeks ago, I was down in Nashville talking to a guy who I started working with, Um, you know, big guy. And he came to America. This is the greatest thing about the United States. He came to America about four years ago, okay? Lived in Washington, D.C. with his girlfriend and her parents after she graduated college and was literally hopped on YouTube, learned how to detail cars (laughs) out of his mother-in-law's house in a very nice area of D.C., and started to make like 60 bucks here, $70 there. He couldn't get a job yet because of his green work, card. And work stuff. visa still and all that stuff. Yeah, still waiting for it. Finally, the guy gets married, you know, within a couple years. Moves to Nashville with his wife. Gets his citizenship. And we're talking less than four years, Kevin. He's doing $1.5 million a year detailing cars. You know, it, it, wow. it's, to me, that's a guy who obviously put the work in, but it's also somebody who had an open mind. Like, you yeah. know, as well as I do, we're always learning. I'm learning yeah. from these younger guys now. They're learning from me. We're always sharing experiences. But these are people who have really put the work in, who were patient and actually made money. You know? Now, did he target Nashville specifically? No, he, him and his wife just wanted to change and went oh, right okay. to Nashville. Because it's one of the fastest growing cities. So oh. like we, you know, it's, it's like, that would be, if you had anywhere to move to, That's to go and look go. at, yeah, go, <laughs> yeah, go look at, go look at demographics, finances, growth, yes. all that Nashville. Cause I do real estate development stuff too. And that's, those are some of the things you look at, but if you're going to, if you're going to start a new small business and it's a yeah. service-based business, those are the things that you'd want to look at. Right. So yeah, I, I, he, I, I, I was wondering. Nailed it. Like he nailed it. Like I, I remember going there when he first got there and there was like four cranes in Nashville. The other two weeks ago, I was driving by. There's 11 cranes in that city. Jeez. Yeah. Driving they're they're crazy. You know, it's booming. Um, and he just happened to pick an area, a nice area uh, called Franklin down in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, you know, one of the nicest areas. I, homes, Kevin, that would blow your mind. There's a lot of There's musicians and there. country stars live there. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. mind blowing. And he's booming, you know? He took his time, he did it right, he built. And now all of a sudden, here he goes, he's off to the races, you know? Yeah. Enjoying the life that he built. And that to me is what I want people to see. Because, like you, I watch you, I, I see you on Facebook all the time. I really, as much as I make jokes about, hey, I need I need a husband like you because you're always building something, <laughs> I, I admire the fact that you keep yourself busy, mm-hmm. you know, and then when I do see you, you're always offering advice or helping, and those are the people that I want to put in my life, you yeah. know what I'm saying, because yeah. that's who I am as well. I, you know, I'm the same way. I just, I, I really believe that enthusiasm is contagious, Yeah, and if you can mm-hmm. spread that positive note to somebody they're going to be positive, you know? Um, And in today's world, I think we need a lot of positivity. Yeah. One of the things that I've done throughout, you know, since we launched Detailers Helper and kind of early on with that stuff is I've always used the phrase, and I probably told you this is, hey, I'm Switzerland, right? Like I'm I'm literally friends with everybody. I don't, you, you know, like obviously I've got friends that don't like, my other friends for some reason. <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah, I was talking to so-and-so and oh, I hate that guy. I'm like, why? First of all, but like, I literally, like, I just, I just try to be friends with everybody and try yeah, to have a positive, positive in, influence and in, in everybody's life that I possibly can. And obviously not everybody's going to like me. Um, I tend to be abrasive and 
to the point and that kind of thing, <laughs> but it, it is what it is, you know, like yeah. I, I hopefully we get a little bit of respect. So, so what in that, so let's take the guy that, so you throw out a number like 1.2 million or whatever that he's doing a year. And the, the danger is for someone to pick up on that and say, Hey, I want to, I want to do that. Right. Yeah. So explain to me, contrast that for me, what this guy's life and family looks like, even so, though he's making this kind of money. Cause my yeah. assumption is that he's an exemplary for what we're talking about. Um, he, he's good. He's good. He's single. Well, he got a girlfriend, you know, he's mm. still young, so he's not trying to commit to a relationship yet. He's, you know, early thirties. Um, and he wants to focus on himself, obviously coming, coming to the United States was a huge move. Yeah. Um, him and his wife literally got divorced, which was a bad thing. Um, but it kind of, they wanted to see the different things, but at the same time, he took that as, do you know what? I'm just going to focus on me and focus on myself first before okay. I can bring others into my life. And I think that's good. I really do. That's admirable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's definitely, um, yeah. you know, cause I think we all have weaknesses, you know? Um, and I hate to use the word weakness, but we all have challenges in our life. I have them, you know, everybody has them. I'm sure you have some things in your life that always could be improved on no matter Dude, what like you're a, doing. Like a literally everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> like the, I think the only thing I gave up on in my life is my dyslexia. You know, yeah. I, I, I found yeah. ways to accomplish it. I found ways to work around it, but I also learned that it became a part of who I am. Right. You know, yeah. So now people kind of expect it. You know what I mean? But I yeah, mean, and honestly, you wouldn't really, other than you know, a couple of misspellings on a Facebook post, you yeah. wouldn't even notice. Like you really, like you, you wouldn't. Yeah, it's not right. a factor, right? In Correct. what you do and how Correct. you communicate. But it, it, it's a huge factor for me because I struggle with it, typing and texting. Like mm -hmm. uh, just the other day, I was working on a Porsche. Okay, uh, this is the life of Barry Thiel. So I'm working on a Porsche. And I had all the letters pulled off on the back. All right. The P, the O, the R, the S, C, H, and E. Oh, this is where oh, you need a staff member to come put yeah. those letters back yeah. in the right order. I tell you right now. <laughs> yeah. Now, remember, <laughs> I, 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 I'm a Porsche enthusiast, and I drive two of them myself. Okay? So I see the word every day. I know the word for how many parts of years of my life worked on these cars. And I had the whole car finished, and I stepped back. I'm like, man, that looks good. I was all excited. You know the feeling. You know? Mm -hmm. you're, you know, like you literally just took something and you made something out of it and you're like, man, but something looks off and I couldn't figure it out. I walked around that car, Kevin, 15 <laughs> times before I realized I had the C and the H bar reversed. Oh. So or, you know, it was already mounted. Luckily I caught it before the customer came in to see it, you know, but still that was a moment where I struggle with my dyslexia because I put it on. It yeah. looked great. And as I'm walking around, I noticed it five minutes later, like, this oh. is bad. Like, who does this? How do you feel does funny. this? You That's know? funny. Yeah, because like, your uh, brain literally just transposes letters and it, it doesn't it, yeah. it doesn't really see the difference, right? Like it, yeah, it sees so, that as like, correct. I will it, it works with with me, it's for letters and words. Mm. So like for example, um if I say to you, How are you today? How are you doing today, Kevin? Mm -hmm. When I type it, it, it will actually say how you are today mm. instead of how are you today. And then the same thing happens with letters where, like, for example, I and E before C, pfft, I don't even <laughs> try anymore. I just put I E down in my Grammarly keyboard. Yeah, there you go. Every time. <laughs> you know? Best invention for a guy like myself is Grammarly. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so I, I've learned to just deal with it and put it aside. And instead of dwelling on negatives that I have in my life, I focus, what can I do with the positives in my life? Yeah. That's yeah. big for me, you know, because yeah. everybody has negatives. We all have positives. I'd rather ride the positives and just enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, if you're constantly focused on the negatives, it's just, I mean, what a miserable existence. I mean, it's like, why oh. even like, if that's your, if that's your life, you need, I mean, just give up now. <laughs> Correct. Correct. I mean, you know, if that if that's the road you're going to stay on, obviously the the better choice is to change your attitude. Yes. Um, yeah. But I think I think what you're what you're pointing out, which is so many people struggle with, is hey man, it's something I say a lot, which is you work with what you got, start with where you are. Yeah. Right. Like if you know, talk. I mean, dude, it, a guy named like Jason Kilmer, right? 
Awesome. You guy. know, yep. you know, Jason one wing. That's his, yep. that's literally his nickname. Jason essentially has one good arm, right? Yeah. And Jason is literally one of the best detailers in the entire world. Like, and I would yeah. put him up against with anybody. I mean, the guy's done, I don't know how it's gotta be almost 20 Riddler cars now that he's worked on. Oh, um, listen, I would, I would whoop his butt with a rotor hands down. <laughs> I'm just saying that so he hears me. <laughs> so All right, I'm gonna, me. I'll text him after this and say, yeah. "Hey, you know, Jason, we'll just we'll title this episode Jason Kilmer ain't shit." <laughs> that- <laughs> hey, he, he doesn't know how to sand either. I'll beat him on that too. Yeah, while there, we're yeah, sure, yeah, while we're sure, it, I'll whoop sure, him sure. on sand and paint too. Yeah, no, I love but Jason. Like, he knows I'm kidding with him when I say that. Yeah, he's talented. oh yeah, we, we give him a hard time. But he, he he's a great example. First of all, he's a super nice caring guy family yes. man his you know he travels a ton but always does his best to be back and and he he really focuses on his family um he's become he he's been a good friend of mine for a long time but i mean you're talking about so you know these guys are bitching and moaning about you know what whatever it happens to be that went wrong in their day a uh, customer said a mean thing to me someone said a mean thing on instagram whatever and then we have a guy that's built an entire illustrious what i would call illustrious career um, with a physical issue that he has to yeah. deal with. Yeah. And it's like, you know, don't use those guys as an inspiration. You know, there's tons of people that are inspiring like that. So use those guys as inspiration. Absolutely, man. It's, I, I, I think the, um, I think that what's that, the old saying, you get out of this world, what you put into it. Yeah. I think you can do anything in your life. If you, if you really want to do something, I think you can do it. I, I yep. just want to. I want to sit down with Elon Musk for five minutes and just say, "How'd you do it all? <laughs> what was your secret?" You know. Have you read his book? He's a little bit insane. I, uh, I can believe that. I can believe that. I have not it, read it yet. It's, I just it's on. It's on that. audio. It's on audiobook too, by the way. So you can you awesome. can check it out. But I love but, those um, Yeah, he uh, his. I don't know if anybody would, would should actually emulate what Elon. Um, I agree. Does. I agree. It is, I, it, it is life. He's got like seven kids. Never sees any of them. Kind of. At yeah, least. No he's he's, he's, he's kind of nuts. But but yeah, I mean, his ability to, to take something and, you know, he took something that really wasn't anything, uh, turned it into a multi multi million dollar thing, sold that, turned it into billions of dollars, you know, and look at, you know, one of the but richest like, men in the you, world. Like what I admire about people like that is. When you look at them, obviously, we all know as an entrepreneur, there's hardship somewhere, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but look at the impact Yep. on the positive impact on the world that he made. You know what I'm saying? Like whether yep. it would be Tesla or anything the guy does, he, he's about the future and caring. And that's what yep. I kind of really admire about Elon Musk yep. versus. Well, even now, I mean, he bu- he bought Twitter out of yeah. for for an uh, for an altruistic as altruistic means, which is he wanted to do something good by yeah. exposing all of the BS that was going on at Twitter and the stuff that I listened to a podcast yesterday with, um, Mark Schellenberger, I think is his name. Um, he's a journalist that's talking about the Twitter files and God, it was crazy, but, um, no, I mean, Elon Musk is like, you know, yeah, he could have bought a built a super yacht that, like Bezos that has to, you know, move bridges in order to get it out of the harbor and stuff like that. But he's, he's using his, using his wealth to try to better mankind. Yeah. Um, and that's, his, important. uh, yeah. And his stance on AI right now is kind of interesting because he's talking about trying to get everybody to stop doing AI development for a pat period of six to nine months or something like that, because he's afraid that it's going to take over and terminate us. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, we, so we're, we're living in that world almost that we we dreamed about when we were in in like the 90s and the 80s you know you yep. remember that first cell phone the motorola oh, yeah. when, when motorola came out with that star tack and you could flip that phone you're like yep. wow you yep. know they brought that back now it's a full LED CD display. Yeah, it's all LED foldable yeah, and like, all that stuff. Yeah, they've reinvented the flip phone. I had the Nokia fifty one sixty, by the way, and that thing. The that. jokes, the jokes they tell about that thing being indestructible. Like my daughter threw it in the toilet. I ran over it. Like, and it's 
like it was fine. Battery yeah. life was like like seventy five days. Yep. <laughs> <on that thing. laughs> they Remember, the, I'm sure you had Nextel too. That was like yep. a big thing. You know, you yep. chirp talk, somebody. push to talk, and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, now we can do it on our world. Apple Watch, right? Yeah. Oh, all right, crazy, isn't it? Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that I know about you that I'd love for you to kind of walk us through, because this this journey is one that I think that um, new detailers, new business owners can equate to kind of starting at one level and then going all the way through and building something great. How did what did your journey look like from cleaning? And I've seen the pictures of your auction cars that you used to work on. And holy crap. If, if, if you guys listening to this have never seen what auction cars look like before they get cleaned, go look up some pictures, go to Barry Thiel's old Instagram pics and stuff. Um, they're gross. Like they're, they're crazy. And the, the thing I always found about that is that you only have a certain amount of hours or budget quote unquote yeah. to get yep. those cars ready to go. Right. So it's not like yeah. you, you can do the detailer thing and, and spend 17 hours on a given car. Take me through what that journey looks like. So from coming from auction, from what you used to do to now owning what has become one of the top coding companies in the, in the world, you guys are doing amazing and built an amazing network. Thank um, you. And have good pro great products. Everything's great, right? Like it's a it's a it's a success story in, in the yeah, way. Yeah, I, I think look. it is. I think um I've always man, I, I I'll tell you, Kevin, I got chills just hearing you say some of that. You know, <laughs> if you can see you can see the hair. Um yeah. it wasn't it wasn't easy, okay? But I had a guy a long time ago, um nobody knows him, he's not on the internet as far as detailing. He said, you know, Barry, you can't do this for the rest of your life. Remember that. Mm -hmm. He's like, when was the last time you saw a 60-year-old detailer? And I thought about that for years. How many, how, when was the last time? I mean, granted, there are some now. But how many guys in detailing are 60 years old plus still doing what they do? Yep. Very few. Very few. And I'm starting to see that. With a lot of my friends in the industry now, they're making different decisions and moving. Um, for me, my biggest my biggest launch into going from a detailer to what I call supplier manufacturer, mm -hmm. basically, was I fell in love with the process of what I was doing. So I I love that that before and after it could be paint, it could be wheels, interiors, anything. I love the before and after, and I love that when I was doing working on a car, my mind cleared away. Mm -hmm. Every headache went away. Every annoyance in my mind, every headache, every issue, every hurdle, that was my serenity right there, working on that car. And that's what I fell in love with. And then I began to fell in love with, okay, so I'm polishing paint. But what actually happens between the pad and the paint? You know, what, what's yep. actually going on there? And I started to ask questions and I started to learn. And, you know, we're, we're surrounded by guys who give their knowledge away in this industry. You know, Kevin Brown and Jason Roses. And I was really close with Tunch Gorn for years. Mm -hmm. um, and that relationship with Tunch really got me interested in the chemical side of things. Yeah. If you don't know who that and, is, he's three. He owns 3D products. Yeah, he owns 3D products. Yeah, I'm sorry. Tunch Gorn. Great guy. Um, still friends, just talked to him the other day, actually, you know, a couple days ago. And I fell in love with that process. But what I always wanted to do was to be in a position where I could give back. Mm -hmm. You know, I want today's guys to be able not to learn the way we did. They have YouTube, they have all this stuff. But growing up, you know, I don't know how long you started detailing, but for me in 93, there really was an instruction. Somebody right. said, here's a machine. This is how you do it. Do it. Eventually mm -hmm. you get good. And if not, we're going to fire you. You know, like yep. you learn. And throughout the years, I've been fortunate enough to attend a lot of trainings, be around a lot of positive people. And I think that I'd like to say I have a wealth of knowledge for our industry, mm -hmm. you know, in multiple facets. Um but I fell in love with the process yeah. and that process transformed me 
into wanting more. And I, I looked at like ways of how I could give back to the industry. And the, the reality of it is, and you see this all the time, is a detailer comes on the online, he gets a little bit of a name, he gets a little popular with himself, he's feeling good. Next thing you know, it's a cycle. Then mm-hmm. there's the, hey, can we copy and paste this but make it my own and say how, how you were doing this when you were 20 and now that you're 30, you're successful. And they copy that same stupid stigma, that influencer yep. stigma. I yep. see it all the time. Um, I want it to be that guy basically though. But do it differently. I want it to be the guy that gives back, that helps and encourages. But I like to see other people grow. So I fell in love with that process. And when we we launched SB3 Coatings, uh, me and my partner, Scott, it's not just me. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm just the B. He's the S. Um, But SB3, what it did for me was it put me into a position to where I can make just enough money to live the lifestyle that I want to live. Mm-hmm. You know, I downsized my house. I'm not a rich man by any means. You know, I have a $200,000 townhouse. I have a couple used cars. You know, I, I try to spend my money pretty wisely. Um, but at the same time, SB3 allows me to give back. Mm-hmm. That's why you see me work in the IDA booth. That's why you see me going to doing free trainings, you know. Um, you know, I helped detail King out a couple weeks ago at their school with a training. I came in today, Kevin, and they sent me a freaking two bottles of liquor that were branded <laughs> with my name on it. Look at this. Look. I'm not even a drinker, but check this out. Oh, nice. Ain't that cool? Yeah, so that's that pretty their, bottle that too. Their, yeah, that was their thank you, you know. Um, and I'm not a huge drinker. I, I might drink at some events when we're out, but never at home really. Um so now I'm in that position to where I get to give back. Mm-hmm. And that's what SB3 has allowed me to do. And since then, my whole life has changed because now I'm traveling. Now I'm meeting detailers. I'm enjoying the life that I have. And I get to share the knowledge, the experience, the strengths that I have. I get to share my weaknesses, my mistakes. I don't want people to make those mistakes. So I'm not doing nothing crazy. I'm just being myself now, finally. Mm-hmm. For the yeah. first time without too many headaches. Um, and it's also allowed me to open up doors and other avenues. Now I'm starting to venture out like you kind of. Um, and now it's not just detailing. I'm getting into watches. Uh, soon machines are next, you know. Um, and I really, for me, the, the hardest part of, and this is the sad reality and it's the truth, is when I went from a detailer to a supplier manufacturer, there were people who doubted me. There were people who said, it's never going to happen. Let's be real. I came into a saturated market, a market that was one of the most difficult, one of the most critical, one of the most overpopulated, the ceramic coating market, you know? Yep. Like the biggest and, and had, and had uh, an interesting, let me just say, interesting uh, consumer opinion, you know, yes. setting, setting crap on fire and... Yeah, so <laughs> all of that, we, all of that stuff, you know, right? Yeah. So literally, what I what I came out to do was I came out and I said, you know what? Let's not sell product. Mm-hmm. You know, let's educate, mentor, and train. That's it. We do that. We will sell product. Yeah. And that's what I do. My goal is to educate, mentor, train, and get other people successful. Because if I can help others get successful, they're going to help me get successful in one way or another. You yeah. know, positivity comes back. I'm huge with karma. Um, the sad reality of it is I lost a lot of friends doing this. Yeah. You know, people don't see that side of it. Yeah. I just now have friends coming back into my life saying, hey, Barry, I'm sorry, man. Uh, you know, um, we, we let things like this get between. I'm like, no, I never did, man. I was just doing myself. You're the one who put it in between us. Yeah. You know, but I don't, I don't, how do I say this? When I'm in business, I'm not looking left or right. I don't care what any of my competitors are doing over here. I mm-hmm. wish them all the best. I want all my competitors to see. The market's huge. If yeah, there's, there's plenty of any, customers in, in anything. Yep. Yeah, you know. Um, so for me, it works. But for other people, it may not be their their cup of tea, you know. Yeah. Um, but for me, that's how I like to do business. I'm very personal. Handshake still means something to me. 
Yeah. You know, I, well, sadly, we it, get contracts, but. I mean, you, so you basically, um, you, first of all, running a product company is hard developing new products and all that. I think <laughs> most people don't understand it's freaking hard. Like it, it's hard. It, it's it difficult. sucks. It's expensive. <laughs> it it, it's painful, you know, and all that. So, so what you did, which uh, I kind of can bring this around, I think, but, um, you set out to, to meet the, the needs of your detailing customers, Correct. which then, and it, and it wasn't even about SB three coatings. It was about your process that you've learned how to be better in business, how to be successful. And this is a component SB three coatings and the network and the products and all of that became a component. Right. Yes. So I, th I, th I think that if you, you know, one of the things I talk a lot about with detailing and business and all that is, is this ideal customer avatar, first of all, understanding who your customers are, but understanding what their needs are. And then everything you do is designed to educate that customer on how you can, and to meet their needs. Right. It, it may be an education component with within a detailing space to educate them about what coatings do, what maintenance washes do, what PPF and tent and all the other services that you do. Um, so I love that. I love that. That's because, you know, you and I, we obviously I've seen the whole thing. Right. Like I haven't seen yeah, all the yeah, inner workings seen, of it, but I've been, it, you know, we've been friends pre SB three and, and kind of be yeah. able to be able to right. watch, watch you be successful and, and build, build a big network, which is hard, hard to do. But I think that speaks to kind of that camaraderie and that community that you've built around yeah. it. and the, and the brand loyalty is really strong. Um, I really like that. So that's, um, what do you think are, so we all have challenges and weaknesses and I'll call them weaknesses is fine. I mean, you know, we all have those challenges. What do you think are some of the biggest mistakes that these detailers and what I, so here's, here's my goal. And it has been since I started detailers helper and, and all the YouTube stuff that I did with educating people about business and, and everything. And I know that with details roadmap, we're trying to do it with websites and SEO and marketing. Um, is to try to help these guys be business owners that work in detailing, not yeah. just detailers. Correct. So, and you know, and, and I know that you have of that same opinion. What do you think these guys, what do you think the biggest, the, the best things that they're doing that you see and kind of the worst, the things that are hurting them the most? I think the things that are hurting them the most is who, Thinking they know it all. <laughs> I, I and do you, know you mean what? ego is a problem in this industry? Yeah. I would and have never guessed. Listen, I, I was there. I understand. You know me, Kevin. I, yeah. I, I was lucky in my younger days. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I thought I knew it all. Um, you know, and and I'm open with this. You know, I, I've talked about it on other podcasts before, but my biggest hurdle was I was just like everybody else, you're a tradesman. You come into a business and you're like, okay, I'm good at what I do. So everything's going to work. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's yeah. not going to work because I was really good at what I did. Mm -hmm. I wasn't so good at running a business. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I was the few that seen the light that learned how to run a business. Um, and in doing so, I, I have what I call it. Like I, I never had a college education, you know. Um, but I, I feel like I paid for my college education. I'm still paying for it in loans. Mm -hmm. um, and I tell this story often because in 2010 to 2013 in my detail shop, I had no idea how to pay taxes. Wow. Yep. None. Okay. So I was a, I was a business owner now, good at what I did. I had work coming from other states, every angle, piling in work. And I knew how to run a shop. I had no clue how to do the back end mm -hmm. until I hired somebody that was good at that because I wasn't good at that. So most guys tend to say, okay, once I get the shop going, I'm going to be that guy. Yeah. I did it differently. I hired the shop manager first, the one that runs my business, stayed in the shop for years until I felt comfortable that everybody was trained, ready to go. And I'm talking, I think it was like five or six years. Um, so for me, I see a lot of guys doing that same exact pattern. 
And the biggest mistake that I pulled out of that pattern of wanting to move from my shop to being a business owner right away was I had no idea how to pay taxes. So yep. here we were in 2009, 10, and 11. I didn't pay any taxes. None. Okay. On a business that was doing pretty good money. Yeah. Here's why I didn't pay them. It wasn't because I wanted to dodge my taxes. I wanted to dodge the IRS. It wasn't because I was a jerk or nothing. It was because I was stupid. It's because yeah. I was an idiot and I didn't ask questions. I was too afraid to humble myself to sit down and learn. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought I knew it all. And what happened was those three years, I owed the IRS like 90 grand when it was all said and done. Okay. But what happens was the IRS didn't catch me for six years. Yeah. Five years. Okay. So it went from 09 and in 14, they caught me for 09, 10, and 11. In 14, in 2014. <laughs> that $90,000 with interest, penalties, and fees was $271,000. That's when you need that a good was, tax attorney. <laughs> yeah. That was my education yeah. right there. That told me you better change because yep. if not, it don't matter how much money you have coming in, it's going to get changed shut and you have no control. Yeah. You know? So there I was nervous. I built this huge business and I had charges being against me brought yep. up failure to file taxes, failure to pay taxes. And these were quarterly charges too, mm -hmm. you know, cause it hit the state, it hit the local. I mean, I was getting hammered from every which angle. And I never thought I'd never get caught, just like everybody else. Eventually, they came around, and they said, hey. And one caught me, and it went viral. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I, you know, I, and I'm, I'm, I hate to say it, but I'm kind of proud it happened to me because now I get to share this experience. Yep. You know, I ended up owing them, like, when it was all said and done, like 200 and some thousand dollars, and it got knocked down to, like, 90, you know. And they literally said, hey, listen, keep paying on it. Keep. I almost have it paid off. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like 20% left. I, 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 I set up a reasonable payment plan. It worked out for both of us. I could pay it off today if I wanted to. Yeah. Um, but I just rather just pay it off as they need. You know, it right. works out for both of us. Um, and that was a big learning lesson for me because my ego got in the way. Yep. So it happens to a lot of detailers. Your ego can get in the way with whether it's a customer or whatever. My ego just got in the way with the IRS and I got humbled by the IRS. Mm -hmm. So that's what changed me, you know? Yeah. Um, and then at that point, I just, I just kept doing what I was doing. I kept growing. But this time what I learned was Barry Thiel cannot do everything himself. Mm -hmm. So now if I need a website done, I call the website guy, yep. you know, I'm done. Like I'm done playing Harry homeowner like you, Kevin. Because every time I try to do that, I screw it up, you know? I stick yeah. with what I'm good at, and that's it, you know? Um, and now, don't get me wrong. There are times I'll, I'll do some stuff. But for me, that was – I think that's the biggest hurdle for detailers is their ego. I literally am a firm believer in that right now. Yeah, I think I think it permeates the industry. I think it's the worst thing in the industry. And it honestly, is. I, I have – I'm obviously involved in multiple industries – um, been in the corporate world. And I've, when I first got heavily involved in the detailing industry, I was like, I was surprised. I've never seen an industry driven by ego on it's the, the individual level. And as a, as a corporate level, uh, more than this one. And I think that that is biting the whole industry in the ass. And I think if I think of an individual can just set that aside, my, my favorite uh, quote regarding this is if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're, you're in the, in the wrong, wrong room. room. You're in yep. the wrong room. I've right? heard that. I've yeah. heard that. And it's, um, and first of all, you're never, you know, I consider myself a, a fairly intelligent, well-rounded guy, but I'm, I, I'm never the smartest person in the room. I just, yeah, I, I just, I'm just not. So it's, it's one of those things. And I think to your point about taxes, if you're a small business owner, you should have a CPA. Instantly. I mean, I mean, they Instantly. will, the, I've used a CPA for all 20 plus years, 25 years almost that I've been self-employed and they've saved me 
hundreds of thousands of dollars. And um, headaches. headaches. And headaches. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they save you money. Like, they save you headaches. They know what they're doing. Um, you know, and I'm not a CPA, but my advice for finding a CPA is you want someone that is aggressive, aggressive enough, but also conservative enough to avoid an audit. But you want, yeah, you want yeah, you, because, you know, I am of the opinion I want to pay as few taxes as, as humanly possible. So get it, get a CPA that can help you do that for sure. Um, I mean, I love, I love what you're saying about that whole thing and I, and taking the process and learning from the process and taking ego out of it. I also think it's important and, and I'm interested to know your thoughts on this, that to know that not, I think so many detailers believe they're an entrepreneur. Um, and I don't think that's necessarily true for all of them. And I, I agree. think, and I think it's okay. The thing is yeah. like, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've just, God made me in a certain way. My family actually has decided I'm a robot. They don't think yep. I'm, a, but, but I'm built in a certain way. And honestly, I don't know a lot of people, nor would I recommend it uh, to kind of live their lives like I do, but it works for me. I'm happy, successful, have great family, all that stuff. But, but what I try to encourage these business owners, first of all, try to be a business owner, not just a detailer, but if you are a detailer and that's your thing, do what you're talking about, which is find people to run the business, help you run the business. But you don't have to put on this label of being an entrepreneur. Like it's okay to be a small business owner and to make, yeah. make a hundred thousand dollars a year. If it works well in your, in your area, if it's $200,000 yeah. a year or whatever, set your goals to live a comfortable lifestyle and, and yeah. don't let, you know, the internet tell you what you're supposed to look like as a detailer. No, I, yeah, I agree. It's, um, you know, and when you look at that, I, I, I think you said that best was, you know, it's okay to make $200,000 a year. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Like I ask guys all the time, you know, I had a guy that was, he was saying how he made a hundred thousand dollars this year and he's lived the best year of his life. Yep. You know, he goes, I may have netted about 70, but where I'm at, where I live, that's good money. Yeah. And I think what happens is you start to see a couple big ticket items come in and then you get addicted. Like yep. I have a very huge problem with addiction yep. and it's not addiction where it's just an addiction problem. Like if I want something and I'm ready to chase it, I'm sure you're probably the same way. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when's it going to happen and how fast. Yep. Um, like you, I'm sure you woke up one day and said, Hey, I want to build, I want to build a garage. So you go out and build this big lavish <laughs> garage, right? Yep. You got done. <laughs> That's a part of your addiction. You know, yeah. you, you constantly, your addiction is you got to be constantly moving. I think, right. You know, looking from the outside in, you know, yep. from what I see, but I agree. my, my, my biggest addiction for me is I like to build, create and help others. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I'm really, I'm at the point where I'm starting to do it. And I finally, I'm focused on a positive addiction. I really yeah. am. You know, it's, it's, it's good. It's good life. You know, I, but like you said, not everybody's an entrepreneur and I don't wish right. it upon anybody. Yeah. I wish I could wake up, work nine to five, come home and make 150 grand a year. Life would be yep. beautiful. Yep. But <laughs> I don't understand how I'm going to work nine to five. I couldn't even imagine clocking in at nine, clocking out at 12 for lunch, clocking back in at one, like, why? I'm here to yeah. work. Let's get it done and yeah. go home. You know? Yeah, I mean, as long, as long as that works for your lifestyle, I think, I think one thing that I try to do is people say, well, I made, you know, hey, what do you do? Well, I'm a whatever. And I made, you know, normally they don't just come out right and say, hey, I made $50 million last year or whatever. But if sure. they do volunteer information like that, my next question is, How's your family? How's your, what's your family look like? How's your kid? You know, you have kids. No. Are you married? Well, no, I'm divorced. I haven't seen my kids for three years and you know, I'm, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> you know, if you start, if you start looking at their lifestyle and what's required sometimes to get there and yeah. I'm not saying everybody that has, has wealth is, is out of balance with their life, you know, but what I, what I would encourage people to do is look at their success and look at their lifestyle and look at their business in a holistic way 
to yes. make sure that it fits. You know, do you have good relationships? And it may be, you know, spousal, it may be girlfriend or whatever, or boyfriend or husband. Your kids, how are your kids? Do you have hobbies? Are you being, you know, like you? Are you involved in community organizations? Are you serving? Um, mm -hmm. All of those things are important. So if you're, you know, I, I'm doing a, I'm doing a little, uh, uh, it's called six minutes to six figures. It's kind of a component of this whole podcast thing, but I'm, I'm doing the words you should never use and words mm -hmm. that are and hustle and grind are my two, uh, are, are two of the ones that I hate the most because it <laughs> indicates that you, it, the, the connotation is that you forgo everything else for the hustle. Yes. Yeah. And, and, that, and you know what? I get wrapped up that too, man. I always say it's a part of the hustle. Yeah. That's my, that's my, it's a, it's a, when my wife says something where she 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 may say like, do you really think this is worth it? I I'll say I have to do it. It's a part of the hustle. <laughs> yeah. Like no, I don't have to do it. I, right. I it's not a part. You want to do it, which is fine. It, yeah, but yeah. So I, again, and that's you know, um, I used to be a skinny guy. You know, good looking, young, decent body built guy, and uh, one of my downfalls. I got so wrapped up in making money years ago. Mm -hmm. I was that guy. I forgot who Barry Thiel was. You know, I'm just now falling back in love with things that I fell in love with as a teenager, as a youth. You know, um, I'm finally getting back into playing golf again. Nice. I, I was a pretty decent golfer in high school. I was on the on the high school team. Um, had, had it loved it. Went to the military. I haven't picked up a golf club in 25 years, probably. <laughs> I played once. So. I'm getting back into that. I'm finally getting back into fitness again. You know, I'm getting back on working on my health. I'm really starting to prioritize the important things in life versus the financial things now. If yeah, the makes... health part, the health part of it, obviously, I'm, you know, that's that's a big component of my life and something that I yeah. preach a lot. That's, you know, it's got to be, it has to be focus, you know, especially, yeah. you know, and just because you're in your 20s doesn't mean that you shouldn't focus on it. Because if you focus on it in your 20s, it's a hell of a lot easier than, than, start, than start, starting back when you're in your mid forties or fifties or, or oh, whatever, man. you know, the, yeah, the good news I, is, is that it's, you can, you can make the same, you can make the same strides even in your, even at 45, Barry. So I'll be, you know, I'll yeah. be watching, I'll be watching yeah. and encur encouraging you on that. And if, you need any, if you need any help, let me know. You hold me accountable, you know? <laughs> Yeah, well, most people don't know my degree is in exercise physiology, and I ran multi-million dollar health clubs. Um, yeah, you used to be in, a model, right? In my twenties, yeah, that's where I met my wife. I was just there to meet her, basically. But yeah, I was I did some modeling. Yeah, back, I remember back we in were, the day. We were at SEMA, and this guy opens up this Playgirl magazine and says, "Look, there's <laughs> Kevin Davis." <laughs> And I thought, no, that's not Kevin. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got, I got a lot, I got a lot of twins out there, evidently. But no, that's, <laughs> you know, it, when, when this airs, <laughs> the, the new story is going to be at SEMA this year. Kevin Davis used to be in Playgirl. You yeah, know, it's all my fault. Go. I apologize. <laughs> that's that's okay. Well, hey, any uh, you know, let's. I've kept you long for a long time, no, but I'm interested. What kind of advice would you give to? A detailer that maybe has been, you know, maybe been in business for a year, a couple of years, trying to make that transition into what we're talking about, which is to be more of a business owner. Give me kind of the uh, the quintessential advice that you would that you would offer to them on how to be successful. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm. I think I'll keep it simple this time. Yeah, I love without, it. Without mapping out and saying you got to do this, 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 they get that anywhere. Yep. I, I think the biggest part is don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah. Because I think a lot of these, a lot of us as detailers, it's a pride driven, passionate industry. Mm -hmm. You know, you, from the moment you start working on a car to you finish, you're passionate what you're doing and your pride is just there. It's got to be the best. And then when you produce a result and you get paid for it, it tends to become ego driven. Yeah. And I, I would like to see detailers humble themselves down just a notch or two. There's nothing wrong with confidence and going out there and gaining everything. But at the same time, humble yourself down a notch or two. And when their problem arises, don't be afraid to go to somebody who's been there and say, hey, can you help me? Yep. Because I think what they'll find is there's a lot of people like myself, yourself, 
who will give genuine advice, you know, to help that person. But they're afraid to ask because they don't want to look like, oh, well, I should know everything at this point, you know? <laughs> yeah. It, I'm 24 it, years old and I've I, I, been detailing for seven minutes and I should yes. know everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But man, yeah, that's it. Man. But yeah. Other that's than awesome. That, just take your time and enjoy the rodeo, man. Uh, when you look at life in general, I think we're pretty blessed as detailers. Mm -hmm. We get to work on cool cars. We get to set our own hours if we do it right and properly. You get paid for it, and you're surrounded by, well, I do think there are some issues in the industry. I think the automotive industry has some of the coolest people in the world that you'll ever meet. Absolutely. And I think you can agree with me. Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. we're in an industry that we're very blessed and very fortunate. But at the same time, don't be afraid just to say, how do I do this? Yep. You know? Because it's supposed to be fun, right? Like that's the yeah. whole, you know, life is supposed to be fun. So if your life yeah. is miserable, if your life is miserable, take a look around, kind of figure out why that is and Doing realize that you, you, you don't know everything and, and reach out to someone. There's, I mean, the detailing community actually does support itself pretty well. Yes. I think, you know, if, if you can develop a, some relationships with some guys locally or girls locally uh, versus getting on the internet for everything where everything is fake um, and um, or most everything is fake anyway. Um, you mean you know, shop flat. <laughs> Yeah. So, Hey, you know, like Barry Thiel Photoshopping his barn finds. I don't know. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> but, oh man, I appreciate your time. I uh, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, always a pleasure to sit and talk to you. Actually, I think this is probably over the 10 years that we've known each other. Plus this is probably our longest conversation. <laughs> yeah. And we got, we got Chris to thank for it. I got to send yeah. him another Whopper today. I think I'm going to do yeah. that after this is over. That'd be good. Did he tell that story? Be... Mm -mm. Chris, did you about it? He didn't tell you that? So no. I, I he called me like once or twice a long time ago. And each time he was going through a Burger King drive through <laughs> So it turned into a joke that he likes to eat Burger King with me all the time. So yeah. one day I, I Googled his business and I realized he worked out of his house. So I didn't even say nothing. I just door dashed him a Whopper. Uh, yeah, and he hates <laughs> oh, I remember. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. I saw that on the yeah, internet. Right, I, yeah, I saw so, that on Facebook one day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, you know, it's again another guy that you could ask questions to, and he'll give you an answer. He won't even charge you. You know, good people. That's yeah. what I want to see in our industry, man. A hundred percent. I it was it's been a real blessing. Chris reached out to me to to kind of get me to come on board with Detailers Roadmap and look at some of their systems and help them do some content and. Uh, some of the stuff that I'm doing and it's been super fun. It's a great organization. Chris is a lot of fun to work for and I'm really blessed to be, um, to be a part of it. So yeah. but hey, I appreciate good, your good. time. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. And uh, you know, I don't know when I'll see you next, probably SEMA again at this, at this point, which is kind of where right. I see kind of where I see all my friends. Right. Yeah. Yep. I hear you, man. So anyway, but thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Get your one-stop success solution at detailersroadmap.com today.